Okay, I couldn't find the uh, Ziploc bags, but I managed to get those plastic containers, a whole bunch of them. So that's what we're gonna use. I guess these will fit inside those big ones or maybe they will go separate, we'll see. But yeah, now we're gonna start packing all this. So as expected, the packing was the harder part of the whole process because I had to record what I have and what I put where and uh, it was really exhausting but in the meantime it is gonna be helpful in future because now I know what I have and I know what is where and I have my notes so I can easily check and when I order parts I will know what I have to order and what uh, I already have there. So it took some time, but it was helpful and it will be helpful. All right guys, one more update for today. I'm really tired. Can't believe that it uh, took me like five hours already and I'm still in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> looks like a mess around but anyways i managed to put away most of the small parts the ones that could go in bins so i have five bins already full and i have one more over there and i have one more in the shop somewhere that i can use and i have all these small ones too for hardware and stuff if I have to, I will buy more beans, but actually I don't see a reason because the rest of the parts are pretty big and won't fit in beans. So these, the dash pieces, I think I'm going to put in the last bin and the rest is going to be just loose. I think I'm going to use this shelf here that we have. That's actually a very nice shelf because it's on wheels and it has some storage areas inside so I can put even small beans inside so that's good and of course there are some very big parts like the rockers and the what should I call it the steering uh, rack and suspension parts and stuff that I don't have too much space for them so I think I'm just gonna put them <coughs> inside the car and yeah but uh, not today I think today with this baby over there we're gonna go home yeah because I'm really tired or should I take this baby no actually I don't have my helmet so yeah anyways uh, most of the parts are away so I'm just rambling around, okay. <laughs> Oops, forgot to show you the most important part. I'm keeping record of everything in bin one. There is a bin 1A, 1B and 1C that contain some other parts inside. And bin two, bin three. So yeah, I'm keeping record of everything. And even somewhere I have notes of uh, what do I need to order so yeah I'm proud with that so I had to show it to you so it is the next day now and I started putting everything on this shelf or cabinet or whatever you want to call it and I thought it was gonna be too small for everything but actually when everything was packed nicely and organized on it it fit almost everything even the two transmissions, the GT6 one and the one that I had for Spitfire, even they went there and only the biggest part, the uh, seals and the steering rack, the differential with the leaf spring and things like that, only these parts 
parts remain in the car, but I managed to pack everything very nicely. Okay, so it is the next day and the flea market is over. Whatever you needed, you should have bought it until now because now everything is nicely packed and put back in containers and the containers are marked. Even the small containers that are inside the big containers are marked and most of the parts fit here in this shelf nicely packed and of course on, uh, there are some more parts here inside the car not everything could be uh, packed away but at least until I start working on this car they can be inside and everything is packed so the only thing is the engine but it's on wheels so I can move it anywhere in the shop that is not going to be on our way and all these tires I'm going to have to tuck somewhere, somewhere in a little corner but yeah that took me yesterday like six hours I would say and today another three maybe or two I don't know but I'm happy because now I know what I have and I know what is where these are all the boxes that I have to get rid of now and here I want to show you also the book collection that Keith gave me thank you so much it's amazing what uh, this gentleman did for me I'm, I'm really out of words and I don't know how to thank him enough so here is the original owner's manual that came with the car it's packed in a little envelope this is interesting, this is Keith's uh, notebook when he started disassembling the car he had these notes taken here he has the serial numbers of the engine, of the car everything has some notes here and then these are like real nice schematics about the bulkheads what what hose goes where, what cable goes where, everything. And the horn relay, what colors, because you know at that time there weren't uh, schematics available in the internet and stuff, so people had to do those things and this is amazing how clear and how organized is everything here. So these are going to be ha handy, even though I have manuals now and I can see in internet stuff, but these notes are going to be handy for me too. Brake lines, etc. So that's that. A workshop manual for GT6 and Vitesse. Motors for in car repair manual. And there's a full section of for Triumph, there's MG, MG, Midget, Jaguar, Fiat, Cricket, Cartina and Austin. So that's helpful too. That's for TR6, spare parts catalog. So you know I'm working on TR6 as well, so that's really nice. I didn't have this. I've seen these schematics I think in the TRF website, but they will be helpful. Okay, that's my contact. Uh, Triumph GT6 MK3 parts catalog. So these are all the original parts number that came out of the factory and beautiful schematics. So this is helpful as well. Then it's Stromberg uh, CD carburetors owner's workshop manual again classic cars triumph rebuild ferraris drivers blah 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 so that's a magazine interesting and classic cars bodywork and they happen to use a speedfire here for this uh, book to show 
how to do body work so that's really nice and I actually have one more book about carburetors and it's at home because uh, Keith mailed it to me a couple of months ago so I have a whole collection now of manuals and stuff and that's great so yeah I think now I still need to do some more things as like I said in my previous video I need to uh, move away this Spitfire from there let me show you here in this corner I have to move away this Spitfire we have a storage outside it's a container so I need to clean that up and organize it nicely and move this car away from here and this is where Anna is gonna live for the next I don't know how long but until I get her restored okay so the spot over there that was taken by the Spitfire for the last one year I guess is now empty I moved her right there in the front and tomorrow I will need the help of a couple of guys to move it to our storage out there but I really regret I didn't take the 66 Spitfire today because that was going to be the perfect opportunity to line them up together and take a picture of all of the rusty beauties at the same time well that's going to happen in the next few years I guess <laughs> but yeah so now I'm going to have to move her over there And there we go, she is nicely packed in her future home, I don't know for how long, she's gonna be waiting here for her turn to start getting restored, hopefully that's gonna be soon. Anyways, isn't she a beauty, huh? Of course she is.